I'm here to invite you guys to join us in a riot. So, uh, who in the audience have heard about uh, Dai? Raise your hands. Nice. So, who in the audience have, has heard about Rai? Nice. And who has uh, used Rai up to now? Yeah, a few people. We need to work more on that, I guess. So, Rai is a fork of MakerDAO Dai. So with a bunch of differences. It has ETH only as collateral. It has a floating peg, so it's not one USD uh, as pegged to one USD as DAI is. It's self-stabilizing with a PI controller, and it has minimal governance too. That's what we call ungovernance. And we're pretty sure this is the future of finance. So here we have a quote by Nikolai. He's the technical co-founder of Maker and the main architect or the main head behind uh, DAI. And I'll actually read his, his quote because it's very relevant to the presentation. Until this shit is in textbooks as a historical turning point for theory of central banking, we're still early. So yeah, suffice to say we're, we're still early. So before uh, I go into what the system is and how it works, I'll tell you guys uh, a story, more of a personal story, actually. So let's do the interactive thing again. And please raise your hands if you have lived in a place with inflation over 100% a year. Yeah, there's quite a few. It's LATAM, right? So it's great. Kudos to the EF for making the event here. So keep your hands up if you've lived through over a thousand percent a year. So yeah, few of them, right? Two thousand, three thousand, good times. So I'm Brazilian, and as a kid, I remember uh, when my family got, you know, their paycheck, we would run to the store and buy stuff, because if you wait until the weekend, next day, you'd pay, you know, you get less stuff for your money. Basically, prices were raising every day. In a peak inflation in Brazil, we had uh, over 3,000% yearly inflation. Between 93 and 94, uh, the average yearly inflation was over 2,000%. So here we have the roller coaster that it was, right? It wasn't like really smooth. Uh, after the military dictatorship uh, in Brazil uh, from the 60s till mid 80s, uh, they left with a really messy economy. So all the leaders that came in, they came in with a plan. Basically, the focus was, you know, how do we deal with inflation? Some of those plans were disastrous, right? They involved freezing prices, freezing wages. In this one, the color plan, they actually seized people's savings and never gave it back. This is actually new to me. I learned this while preparing to the presentation. Here we have a graph of the number of people in the Monetary Council of Brazil, or the guys, you know, setting rates, and the inflation in red. So you see how they correlate, right? So the less people you have, it seems to be better, right? So, <laughs> yeah, and, and this sharp decline in the inflation was in 94. It was called Plano Real. It was really interesting. I mean, they did some obvious things, right? Cut government spending, uh, stop printing money, right? And they also did one thing that was not really obvious. They cr created another unit of value. So things were priced in this new unit that was called URV, or Unidade Real de Valor, or unit of real value. But they were still paid in the currency of the time. That was the, what's it called? Cruzeiro Real. And after a while, once people were you know, free from the inflation mindset, URV, became the Brazilian real that we have to this day. This plan was mostly successful. So we went from over 2,000% inflation to mostly single digits since then. So now we think, OK, the US is exempt from this, right? So far, so good. But uh, yeah, actually, they seem to be losing control there. So during the COVID years, uh, they printed 30% of the money supply. 
And they seem to have underestimated the resulting inflation from it. So they took long to act, and now they seem to be overreacting, throwing the whole world into a recession, right? And now going back to crypto. So we have like a speed run of what we're talking about, right? Oh, so oops. we had here the Luna uh, UST, you know, fiasco uh, graph. Let's do another one. Raise your hands if you lost money in Luna UST. So yeah, lots of people. And yeah, please, the other ones should pay a beer, you know, to those guys. So <laughs> yeah, I know it was painful. So Vitalik wrote a, an article recently about stable coins just after the fiasco, right? Comparing Rye to UST. And the main takeaway for me at least was that if your stable coin cannot contract, if it, if it cannot win down, it's likely a Ponzi, right? So here we have, you know, the, the graph showing, you know, when Luna or UST had to win down for the first time. It was ugly. 50 billion was erased from the market in a few. So that's a billion with a B, right? So lots of money. Uh, now think about what happens if the USD has to contract? The USD with a D, right? How would it work? So, but I'll leave this, you know, as an exercise for you guys to think about this. So here, having lived through hyperinflation, I can't help but wonder, you know, uh, how do we get ourselves out of this dark age? So these are some of the questions we were obsessed when building Rye. So, what if the humans are the actual main source of instability? What if our currency was honest? What if our currency was not a Ponzi? What if our money supply automatically expanded and contracted? What if proper central banking has never been tried? So here's a picture of Milton Friedman. He's a famous economist. And we're trying to achieve you know, his, his vision here. So back to what is right, we will now go through, you know, not that you guys know why I care so much about this thing, uh, we will go through and explain each one of these bullets to you guys. So, like die, rye is over collateralized. You open a collateralized debt position by depositing ETH and minting rye. We call it a safe. It's not to be confused with a gnosis safe, you know, so the die CDP is a safe for us. If our collateral ratio drops below the minimum 135%, your ETH will go to a liquidation auction. Just like DAI, we have an OSM there, so you have a one, time, one hour time delay to react in sharp you know, price changes. And like MKR, we have FLX, so that works as a, the main backstop if liquidations fail. And RAI is backed by ETH only. This is very, very important because centralized collaterals have a way of taking over if you're not careful. DAI is now generated from around 80% centralized collateral, the vast majority being USDC. So we all know after the tornado cash events recently that you know, they can freeze uh, any holder, including you know, pools and systems. If that happens, you know, DAI holders will suffer Dai will lose most of the value. By only backing Rai with ETH, we want Rai to inherit the moneyness that ETH has earned. We also made the decision, you know, to prevent, sort of like this actually prevents Rai from really scaling. Rai can only grow so much, you know, and we expect that it will grow as ETH grows in, in value too. I'll get back to this uh, towards the end of the, the presentation. So people often ask us, you know, how is it stable if it's not one USD? So the way we see this, it's more like a, like a foreign exchange, a foreign currency, right? So here we have the exchange rates of several currencies, the largest ones, against USD. And the Rye redemption price is the smoother line in green there. So as you can see, it's not much different than well, a foreign exchange. Uh, we're doing about as good as China there. So, pegged stable coins have a big problem, also highlighted by Vitalik. They're either pegged, 
when everything is okay, you know? Or they're off back and everyone is freaking out, you know, what the fuck is going on? So Rai has one mode, it's always off back, you know? That's business as usual. It's a matter of degree. So we're not getting out of bed because it's off back, right? See how cozy this Pepe is. And here we go to the PI controller. That's the heart of the system, the coolest part too. So we have a graph here. The market price from Uniswap curve is the red line over there. Redemption price is the smoother line in gray. So when the market price goes above the redemption price, or redemption price is basically the internal system peg, right? When the market price goes above the redemption price, the redemption rate goes down and starts pushing the redemption price down. The opposite is also true. So if the redemption price, or if the market price goes below the redemption price, the redemption rate will go up. And here below we have actually the rates. The redemption rate is formed by two rates. We have the P rate in blue and the I rate in orange. The P rate in blue is instantaneous. So when the price, market price crosses the redemption price, it will immediately cross to the other side. We can see recently, in the recent days, it's been the first time in a while where the market price went below the redemption price and the P rate immediately goes positive there. The I rate stores the error of the last 30 days. So it's like a memory, it makes the controller stickier. This is why it's not yet positive, right? The I rate is uh, a lot higher than the, or a lot higher to the negative side than the P rate there. Stability for RAI means balancing RAI supply and demand and not pegging it to one USD. So with RAI, you know where the yield is coming from. When rates are negative, RAI holders are paying RAI borrowers. When rates are positive, RAI borrowers are paying RAI holders. This value transfer between RAI holders and borrowers is mediated by the PI controller we saw previously. And they the controller actually incentivizes the balancing the supply and demand for RAI. So we have a saying that the money god always wins. So we say this because it's pointless to fight against the money god. If you push against the controller, the rates increase exponentially against you and you burn money, basically. You don't want the angry money god against you. So you want to keep him happy. If you help him work, though, you can make money out of it. Now on to ungovernance. That's what we call, you know, minimal governance. So the system has been controlled by the community since July this year. When we started, we started with the usual team multisig and we completely transitioned to the DAO now. So the team multisig is no longer active and has no control of the system. But before doing that, we actually locked down pretty much everything, you know, to prevent governance from being used as an attack factor. So unlike in DAI, where the governance can do whatever it pleases, in RAI, governance cannot print RAI, cannot print FLX, cannot steal collateral, and so on. So the only things it does right now, or it can do right now, is govern external dependencies, like oracles, like uh, saviors, and some of the parameters the system has. Uh, I mean, some parameters we felt we were not ready to set in stone, like the PI controller parameters. Everyone's still learning, so the community can govern them through a vote. So we believe RAI represents the future of finance. Central banks in the future will be open source programs. The cost of operating a central bank will drop by a thousand times, even more, you know. They will run transparently and autonomously. So the way the Fed works today is like MakerDAO. They get together in meetings and they decide on rates. As autistic people, we know you don't need meetings to set rates. One day, everyone else will learn this too. You know, today we treat currency management as a holy art that only some arcane wizards can perform. In truth, the more we can demonstrate simplicity, the more we can dispel the illusions around how money should work. We believe in a future where communities can take ownership of their own money or the cost of deploying and maintaining a currency is as easy as the deploying you know, some open source code. So as Amin said there, we can stay autistic longer than they can stay retarded. ETH lords, you guys should join us, right? If you have ETH as a collateral, 
in a system that has risk from centralized uh, collaterals, you should move, right? Deposit ETH, like borrow rye, spend it, you know, long rye, short rye, do basically work with the money god. This is a tweet, interesting one from Cure, and I, uh, it talks about a position Vitalik has in the system. So Vitalik, in the recent months, with the negative rates, he made $75,000 by shorting rye. So he's helping the money god and making money. You guys should maybe try it too, you know? Uh, also join us on Discord, Meme the Dream, right? Help us write explainer content. Uh, there's a really interesting research channel where people discuss monetary policy, control theory, and whatnot. Uh, enlist also in our dev reserve force we're building right now. And there are plenty of bounties available there also. Uh, not only technical, you know, there's bounties for everyone. So uh, check it out. And lastly, we're also building the Money God League. So what, what do we call the Money God League? Basically, we know Rai won't scale. So instead of envisioning one huge stablecoin to rule them all, we envision a future with thousands of Rai-like systems. So as you can see over here, let me get out in front. Maker is discussing becoming a Rai-like system now, right? Abandoning the peg so they can get rid of USDC. So maybe they join us in the future, you know, by getting back to the original Nikolai vision there. Uh, there's also H2O from Ocean Protocol. It's a fork of Rai that is collateralized by their data tokens. There's also a group working on Tai, which is a multi-collateral version. And maybe you should join us too, you know, if you have a, an idea, you want to build another flavor of the system, come talk to me, join our Discord, we're happy to help, you know, the more systems out there, the better, right? Sort of like the Hydra vision of the thing. We don't need a huge stable coin, we need several smaller ones to contain failures too, you know, and allow for experimentation. So this meme was made by Charlie Noy from Paradigm. It's some true VC value add here. So I'll leave this running here while I take any questions from you guys. We still have eight minutes left, so. Um, so good morning, Fabricio. Uh, two questions. Uh, can, could it be like a PID controller instead of just PI controller? And other, could it be checking the price of that corrected by inflation? Or that's like impossible to do? Yeah, uh, interesting questions. I mean, we started with a P-only controller, actually. Now it's a PI. I don't see why not could be a PID, too. So it needs experimentation, right? There's still room for a lot of experimentation. With Rai, we tried to make it like as pure as possible. So only ETH, minimal governance. Now with the forks, you know, the, I mean, there's a ton of possibilities. We see like uh, Tai, for example, the guys explained that for a multi-collateral version, you need more governance, right, to onboard new collaterals. And their goal is, of course, to try to keep it to decentralized collaterals. Uh, on to the other question. I forgot what was the second one. Please remind me. <laughs> yeah, the ad price could be checked by, corrected by inflation on USD, ah, okay. not just USD. Yeah, so pegging is a true challenge, right? Uh, by having no peg, I mean, uh, 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 I went through the, like, the advantages of it. So if you're pegging to an inflation index, for example, you have the same problems of a pegged currency. I mean, it could be done, but then the negative rates could not be applied to price as we do, right? They could may maybe be applied to the stability fees, right? Or the borrow fees people pay, you know, on their borrowed amount. So yeah, I guess it could, you know, if you feel this is a nice idea, I guess, you know, come join the Money God League and yeah. Build it. We're keen to help. So, <laughs> hi. Uh, thank you. Uh, since there is no peg, uh, when does Rai fail, and under what scenarios? Yeah, that's will this happen? What are the failure modes? Yeah, that's uh, hard to say. I mean, uh, there's no peg, and 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 I mean the. There are a bunch of failure scenarios too, right? I mean, we could, as in the Black Thursday, you know, Maker failed to liquidate CDPs. This could happen. Uh, regarding the controller, you know, there are some cases in control theory 
where the controllers go crazy too, right? You've seen like robots going out of control and spinning like crazy and then f destroying. Yeah, that's a PID controller failing. <laughs> so if that happens, uh, we would need to global settle the system. As Maker did with Psy, we had a proto Rai before Rai too, we global settled. So if the system becomes unsustainable, it can still be closed down and then everyone, both uh, safe holders, safe owners and Rai holders can go back there and, and get their ETH back. So it's not a complete loss. But we have to keep an eye on this. This is also an experiment, right? So we're trying to be conservative, but I don't know, in future iterations, it could be that not on Rai, Rai is pretty much closed down, but I mean, on other Mo Money God League members, this could happen. I don't know, we just have to keep an eye to see if, you know, the controller is not going crazy on us. Thank you. Yep. Um, um, this summer, during the uh, where oh, are you over here in front of you to your right? Hello. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> um, this summer, when it was um, when the market and redemption price were different for like months, and we were seeing like thirty percent difference rates, it, it I mean, um, it, it kind of struck me that um, why can't the system tolerate some sort of steady state error where market and redemption price are just like different for a while instead of the eye just punishing us more and more and more. Yeah, that, that's actually a, a good point. Uh, this happened at the time, we're not sure why, you know, like Nikolai claimed we were being attacked <laughs> by some actor, you know, trying to prove us wrong. Uh, some people think, you know, because of the UST fiasco, then because of the tornado cash thing, you know, a bunch of people market bought right, and then the money got, got mad, you know, and punished everyone, and Vitalik made a bunch of money. That's the, so yeah, we're still discussing this. There's actually, there will be a proposal to tweak this. We do feel the I term right now is too strong maybe. It could be punishing less, you know, and make it less sticky. So yeah, please don't join the discussion. You'll like it. Uh, there will be a discussion in the forum soon. And until the end of the year, we will tweak the programs. We try not to tweak them really like with a lot of, with a, uh, I mean, too quickly, so we see the results, you know, we see the thing, how it plays out. But yeah, there will be one change in this year. Uh, it's been like that for over six months now, so, and it, I mean, it withstanded some pretty big shocks in between, you know, we, we switched from a uh, raging bull run to a bear market, right? And then things collapsed, and then there were, I, I mean, people tried, started valuing decentralization more, so, uh, yeah, I guess let's see if next year is more stable too with uh, new params and we will see. The idea is to tweak less and less and, and on a smoother way, you know, like uh, uh, until we can set the params in stone and just ungovern the controller too, so. What, what are the uh, incentives for executing liquidations and maintaining the, the system health? Um, like, for example, like Maker has this decaying, uh, you know, auction where like Ave, you can have, you'll find out that there's a lot, of, a lot of people that should be liquidated that are not liquidated, but Maker, everybody eventually gets liquidated. Mm -hmm. So what's the incentives and how is that maintained and so what telemetry do you have into mm -hmm. to see what needs to be liquidated? So when we started, the collateral auction house was a fixed discount collateral auction house. So it provided a fixed discount on ETH, you know, against the market price. Then after six months or so, even before Maker liquidations 2.0, we started with an increasing discount auction. So it's pretty similar to Maker. I mean, the implementation is completely different, but the, the mechanism is the same. And we're decentralization freaks too, so every call for keepers in the system is incentivized somehow. Uh, actually, the system right now for the keepers out there is grossly overpaying calls, <laughs> so you can make a lot of money by helping the system. Uh, there will be a proposal soon to lower the rewards because they were adjusted for gas prices from the bull run too. And now the network is, you know, a lot, I mean, block space is cheaper, so we can lower the rewards and, you know, the, the system can save money until it's needed to, to raise them again. Uh, for other things, I mean, for everything, there's a, an incentive there. I mean, uh, it depends on the call and on, on, the, on, the, on what you're doing. So. Hello. Um, uh, hello. What's the point of using uh, Rai instead of straight ETH if it's free floating and it's just backed by ETH? Yeah, Rai is supposed to, I mean, it's free floating, but it's uh, way less volatile than ETH. So 
while it's, it is free-floating, it is a stable coin, right? It's kind of like the euro against the USD. Mm -hmm. You know, of course, it's going to oscillate, right? Tomorrow, it's going to have a different price. But it's not going to go crazy on you and crash 50% from today to tomorrow, right? So uh, Rye is a very dampened version of ETH, basically. And we, early on, it's actually quite interesting because we had, like, we didn't want to call it a stable coin because everyone called stable coins, you know, the one USD thing. And now we sort of, we're sort of reclaiming the name. So we feel Rye is the only true stable coin. And all the other ones are what we call peggies <laughs> or pegged coins, you know. So yeah, that's it. So if you need a stable coin that retains, you know, the moneyness of ETH, there's Rye. That's the goal of it. Yep. As the money god grows and adoption grows as a currency, what do you see or what do you expect? from central banks and other institutions trying to corrupt or crack down on coins like Rai? Uh, so yeah, the more decentralized you are, the harder it is for them, right? So <laughs> we're taking our precautions from day one. Uh, the idea is to have it, you know, almost trustless in the future. So yeah, they can try to stop Ethereum. I mean, it's going to be hard, right? And yeah, our main goal is actually, you know, uh, some central banking bankers are actually noticing this. So we feel that central bankers should not be setting rates, right? Because they're people and they're like subject to politicians, you know, making pressure and influencing them. So in the future, as we see, you know, they need to be very predictable on setting rates. So in the future, as we see, they will have a software, right? Might not be ours, might be theirs, but you know, they will have a set of, you know, an algorithm setting rates. And then central bankers, instead of monthly setting rates, they will just tweak the parameters, you know, until they perfect the, their, their own controller, right? Yeah. Isn't there a danger, though, in where there will be crackdown, let's say, on the use case, and then the attention towards stable coins like Rise will just... Yeah, I mean, there is. I mean, everyone is noticing this, right? Uh, we feel Rise last in line, though. Uh, the risk is there. I mean, I agree with you. But for example, if, if you look at DAI, they have USDC inside. So, you know, they're one action from Circle from being frozen. Uh, they also have, you know, a huge governance thing going with lots of people uh, that can tweak and that can do many things in the system. We prevented that. So we try to close these doors. There's also another thing, right? When you look at stablecoin regulation, we're lucky that regulators think stablecoins are all pegged to one. So uh, I think they're overlooking still, you know, like how Rye works and how stable it is. So yeah, I guess this is going to happen eventually, but we feel Rye is the most resistant of all, you know, and we're keen to improve it too, you know, with new designs, new iterations of it. So that's amazing. 